In this problem, we're asked to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. And although the problem mentions that we're dealing with a buffer solution, you should also be able to recognize that this is a buffer because we have a solution of a weak acid, in this case acetic acid, together with its conjugate base, the acetate anion in the form of sodium acetate. So when we dissolve that sodium acetate in water, we end up with the acetate anion and sodium cation as well. And the concentrations are given. We have 0 0.080 moles per liter of the weak acid, acetic acid, and we have 0 0.040 moles per liter of the conjugate base, sodium acetate, and therefore 0 0.040 moles per liter of the acetate anion. The Ka is given as well. It's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's Ka for the weak acid. The key to a lot of aqueous equilibrium type of problems is understanding what processes are really going on. So we've already identified this complete dissolution or dissociation of sodium acetate in solution to identify that we have 0 0.040 moles per liter of acetate anion in there. But the question is, what are acetate and acetic acid involved in chemically once they're in aqueous solution? The answer is hinted at in the fact that Ka is given here. And the relevant reaction is between acetic acid CH3CO2H, aqueous, and water. As we've seen previously, water is the dominant species here, and so it's going to be the major player in reactions of solutes in aqueous solutions. And the equilibrium here is going to produce the conjugate base, CH3CO2 minus the acetate anion, as well as H3O plus. And this is the big driver behind any change in pH from neutral, from 7, due to the dissolution of the acid and the conjugate base. To find the pH of this solution, we're essentially doing an ice table sort of problem like we've done previously in the previous chapter on, on equilibrium, right? The only difference here, and it's not necessarily really a, a big difference, but the important thing to notice is that we have amounts initially of the conjugate base and the acid. Right? We've got 0 0.040 moles per liter of the conjugate base and 0 0.080 moles per liter of the acid. We'll want to start with these on the initial line, 0 0.080 there and 0 0.040 here. We can't ignore water completely because it's a liquid, and we can assume zero initial hydronium since these other two initial concentrations are much larger than the 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter of hydronium that we find in pure water. Since we're starting with essentially no H3O+, we can assume that this process is going to go forward, meaning we're going to see a decrease in the concentration of acid, an increase in the concentration of conjugate base and hydronium. And we can write the equilibrium line as usual by summing the two and go right to the equilibrium expression. Ka here is going to be equal to the concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium times the concentration of acetate at equilibrium. I'm just going to abbreviate that as A minus here to save a little space. Divided by the concentration of the acid HA at equilibrium. We can plug in these values that we have. We have X for hydronium. We have 0 0.040 plus X for acetate concentration at equilibrium. And we have 0 0.080 minus x for the acetic acid concentration at equilibrium. We can then solve for x, and in this case, because x is going to be very small because of the small Ka, we can use the small x approximation to essentially ignore the plus x and minus x terms here, keeping in mind that we need to leave this x here. And when we plug in the Ka value and go ahead and solve for x, we arrive at a final value of x is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. Now this is the equilibrium concentration of hydronium, right? We can see that by noticing that the H3O plus equilibrium line of the ice table, this cell right here, is just equal to x. So to calculate the pH, we can just do the negative base 10 log of x, and that gets us to a value of 4.44 for the pH. So this example should feel pretty familiar. We're, we're just applying a strategy that we've used before, the ice table method, to a new context where we start with a mixture of an acid and its conjugate base. And the reaction of interest, and, and this is key, you're going to be expected to be able to re write and understand reactions of this type from a question prompt like this. 
the reaction that is, is key, the basis of the ice table, is the proton transfer from the weak acid to water to form hydronium in the conjugate base. There's a somewhat easier way to go about solving problems like this. Rather than building out an ice table, as we did in the last example, we can start with the Ka expression and notice some interesting things about Ka expressions for any acid dissociation process, which is going to be the basis of essentially any buffer of a weak acid in its conjugate base. So just as we wrote out before, Ka is going to be equal to H3O plus at equilibrium, and I'm going to add the EQ subscripts here for reasons that will become apparent in a second, the conjugate base concentration at equilibrium divided by the acid concentration at equilibrium. We can rearrange this equation slightly to isolate H3O plus at equilibrium by multiplying both sides by HA at equilibrium divided by A minus at equilibrium, right? And so we end up with HA at equilibrium times Ka divided by the conjugate base concentration at equilibrium is equal to the concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium. But now, if I take the negative base 10 logarithm of both sides of this equation, you can see right away that negative log of the hydronium concentration, well, that's just equal to pH, right? And I can apply the negative log term by term here. Negative log of the Ka, well, that's the pKa. And in applying negative log to the ratio HA over A minus, I can flip the fraction, right? I can invert the, the fraction and take the reciprocal and change that to a positive sign, leaving us with plus the logarithm of the A minus concentration at equilibrium divided by the HA concentration at equilibrium. This equation in blue at the bottom of the slide is known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And really, we can see that we started from the equilibrium expression for Ka. So this equation and this equation are equivalent to one another. It's just that one is, as I like to call it, in P land, in negative log land, while the other one is just kind of in normal mathematics land. The beauty of this equation at the bottom of the slide is that it allows us to go right from concentrations of the conjugate base, the acid, and a given pKa to the pH. So if you think about the last problem, that's what was given. We had a concentration of conjugate base, we had a concentration of acid, and we had a pKa that were given. And by simply plugging in these numbers, we could get to the pH. One of the things to keep in mind with this process, though, is this equilibrium subscript. We were given initial concentrations. These concentrations, 0 0.040 moles per liter and 0 0.080, these are technically initial concentrations. However, in the course of solving that problem, we noted that the small x approximation applied. So in the term 0 0.040 plus x and 0 0.080 minus x, in those terms we could ignore the plus x and minus x and just write 0 0.040 and 0 0.080. In words and conceptually what this means is that the initial concentration of, say, conjugate base is approximately equal to the final concentration of conjugate base. And in fact, the same idea applies to the acid concentration. Because these were so large relative to the Ka to begin with, we can assume that they don't change much. They change to a negligible degree as this process comes to equilibrium provided that small x approximation works, which it does in the vast majority of buffers, because we want to use large concentrations of the acid and conjugate base to protect the buffer from pH damage, to allow it to do what it's meant to do, which is resist changes in pH. In any event, provided the small x appro approximation applies, we can replace these equilibrium values with the initial values recognizing that the two will be approximately equal. So it's an approximation, but it's one that works very well to calculate the pH of a buffer. Usually the difference between applying the full-blown ice table approach without making approximations and applying the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation using initial concentrations is negligible. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation makes our lives a lot easier by allowing us to skip all of the ice table approach provided the small x approximation applies and go straight to plugging in concentrations in a given pKa to calculate the pH of a buffer. You may see this equation written a few different ways. 
uh, and I want to talk a little bit about those potential differences that you may see out there now. Um, if the acid over base ratio, in other words, if the reciprocal of this is used instead, you'll see a minus sign out front of the log. So you might see minus log of acid concentration divided by base concentration. You'll see that out there. I think it's helpful to think about how the concentration of the conjugate base should influence the pH conceptually, right? Adding more base should increase the pH. Intuitively, that should feel right. And similarly, adding more acid should decrease the pH. And these two terms in blue and green reflect that idea. You may also see this, this log term written just using the words base and acid. So you might see plus log concentration of base divided by concentration of acid, for example. Here it's just worth keeping in mind that base and acid refer to conjugates. They have to be related as conjugates, otherwise the dissociation of the weak acid won't apply, right? And of course you may see the inverse of this as well, minus log of acid over base. We can also write the henderson hasselbalch equation in terms of a basic buffer and pOH, and in that case pOH is equal not to the pKa, but to the pKb plus the log of the acid concentration now, Hb plus, divided by the base concentration, B. Similar idea here, this equation is derived from the Kb expression rather than the Ka expression, but it has the same intuitive feel and ideas. As we increase the concentration of acid, the pOH goes up. That should make sense. The concentration of hydronium increases, the concentration of hydroxide decreases. As we increase the base concentration, on the other hand, the pOH goes down and we have a higher concentration of hydroxide.